All right, welcome to day three here. We're on lesson four today. You're talking about inscribed and central angles. We're also going to do a, a few questions from lesson five, so we'll get there at the end. But um, basically just talk about the definitions and then how to use them here. So, all right, some experiments with inscribed angles. So an arc, you can pause if you need to. The definition is it's a portion of the circumference of a circle. So if we were to draw ourselves a circle here, okay, all right, we'll stay purple. Okay. An arc is just basically between two points on the circle. It's a portion of that distance. It's a portion of that circumference around the circle. Great drawing, right? Okay. Um, that's what an arc is. A major arc and a minor arc. Okay. So a minor arc is an arc that measures... we. We've usually used the term less than 180. You may see a couple websites, I know Wolfram Math has less than or equal to 180. Less than or equal to 180. So keep that in mind. Special guest time. All right. So this arc that we just drew would be considered a minor arc. And so you name a minor arc, which is two letters. So let's say, for instance, that we move this up a little bit and call this A, B. Okay, then this would be minor arc AB. We would use two letters, and then we draw a little um, curved hat on top to indicate that it's an arc instead of just a line segment. All right, now if we went the other distance around the circle, so we traveled from A to B, but instead of going the shortest way, we went the other way around, we would want to pick a point somewhere over here and call it C, and this arc. Okay, is called a major arc. So it's one that measures more than 180 degrees. And for major arcs, we have to use three letters. Okay, so we would say that this is arc A, C, B. Major arc A, C, B. Now, if there is another letter on here, let's say D, right? I could call this arc instead arc A, D, B, okay? But I have to start and end with the endpoints of the arc. So I have to start and end with D. And then I could use any letter along the way. Okay. A semicircle, remember, is half of a uh, half of a circle. So it's an arc that measures exactly 180 degrees. Your first okay. An inscribed angle is an angle that has its vertex on the circle. And each side of the angle connects to a point on the circle. So it's chords. So this is an example of an inscribed angle. Okay. And this is always equal to half of its intercepted arc. So the intercepted arc is the arc that's created by the endpoints of the angle here. So between points D and F, this is referred to as the intercepted arc. So remember, if this angle is, let's say, um, 80, right? then this angle, if the arc is 80, sorry, then the angle is going to be 40. It's going to be half. Okay, it's always half. We'll talk about why a little bit later. The central angle, the vertex is always at the center of the circle. And the big one is that the central is the same. Okay, so inscribed is half. Vertex is on the circle, it's half. And central is the same. So once again, right, the vertex is uh, the sides of the angle are extended out. The um, intercepted arc would be, be points between points A and C here. And then once again, if this is 100 degrees, our angle is also 100 degrees. Central is the same, okay? So the angle is the same as the arc. So we talked about intercepted arc. It's an arc that is formed where the sides of the angle intersect the circumference of the circle. So here it's between points D and F. Here it's between points A and C. So we always want to make sure we reference the intercepted arc, figure out the angle. So arcs and angles, the measures, go together. All right, that's how we're going to kind of figure out missing angles. So we are going to skip a lot of the challenges and stuff here. Um, I do want to stop and talk about number 23. So it says draw a point on the circle and label it B. So let's say we label this B. Okay, we want to draw angle B, C, B, D, C. So we'll call this B and C. All right, so this is an inscribed angle because the measure or the, the arc, the vertex is on the circle here. 
at D, all right? Um, and the, right, the endpoints are part of the circumference, okay? And the intercepted arc would be the arc, minor arc, BC here, okay? Now, this other angle here, where D is, right, is also considered to be an inscribed angle. So this, right, would be angle BDC. This is our intercepted arc. And this would be half of that arc. So this angle is just half of that arc. Okay? Which also helps us kind of get what's going on, what we talked about the last few days, where if my intercepted arc is a half circle, a semicircle here, okay, then these angles being formed here have to be right angles. This angle has to be right angle. That has to be right angle. That has to be right angle because it's always half. So if we draw an inscribed angle, right, where the endpoints of the angle are the diameter, we're always going to end up with a right angle. And that was one of the things we talked about the last few days. Okay. You can kind of draw those for yourself if you'd like. Pause if you need to, but we're going to keep going here. Okay. On the next page, we don't really need to be uh, doing anything here. Okay. We're going to go over to the next page after this one. All right. This, once again, is called a central angle. So angle BAC is a central angle. The vertex is at the center. Remember the inscribed arc would be arc between the two endpoints of the angle, right? So arc minor arc BC there, and the angle is the same as the arc, okay? So we don't really need to talk too much about this. All right, so you can see how the book defines uh, minor and major arcs. We're not using this definition, okay? Uh, it's kind of confusing. Just remember minor, right, less than or equal to 180, kind of less than in our mind, majors more than, and then if it's equal to 180, we're calling it a semicircle. Okay, inscribed angle, right? Vertex is on the circle. It's equal to half the intercepted arc. Central angle, right? The vertex is is this is on the center of the circle, or is the center of the circle. Okay, and it's the same as the arc. And the intercepted arc of the angle is connecting the endpoints, okay, of our angle on the circle. So we can actually see using a protractor here, okay? And we can actually talk about, I guess we can match this up here, all right? And see the, why this uh, angle is actually 90 degrees. So if I take my protractor, place that right at point C, well, as close as I get it, I guess. Yeah on there okay uh that this represents essentially a 90 degree angle right there okay so angle b d c right b i should say b c d here so b c d is right here we know that that is actually going to be a 90 degree angle okay that measures 90 degrees and angle b a d this is this straight angle is 180 degrees. So it's actually a central angle, right? Intercepted arc is a half circle. It's the same. All right. We're not going to get into too much of this with measuring our, our, um, our angles. I'll tell you what. I will measure it for you, and I'll put down the degree measure, and we'll see if we can figure out the other one, okay? So just hold on a minute. I'll put the measure down. All right, so we went ahead and finished measuring. So angle BAC is just about 59 degrees. Okay, so we want to figure out uh, the inscribed angle right over here. So um, in this instance, we'll say BAC is 59 degrees, which means this intercepted arc is the same measure. So this is also 59. And remember, this is inscribed here. So this is half. Okay, so one half of 59, and that's 29 0.5 degrees. All right. Number three, I measured that central angle BAC as 100 degrees. Okay. And so working this way, we know that this arc, if this is 100 degrees, then this has to be exactly half. 
And so we know that this is 50 degrees. Okay. Now I'm going to just erase this, but just a talking point. Okay. If I knew that this arc was, let's say, uh, 48 degrees, then I would be able, or the angle, this intercepted arc would be double that. So this would be 96, 2 times 48, right? 96. And then that would tell us to measure the central angle, because that is also 96. So given this angle, right, we double to get this, and then that's the same. So that's the relationship between the central angles here. Um, and this is the explanation why. So if we took a circle and we drew in, okay, um, an angle here, all right, and we can kind of do it with this one to be specific, a uh, inscribed angle here at X. If we draw in this radius and connect, we're essentially creating an isosceles triangle, right? And so this angle over here, if you remember, is an exterior angle, and it's equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles here. So this is actually equal to 2x, okay? And remember, central is the same, so this arc is also 2x. And so we can now see, right, that this angle, which started out as x, is half of that arc. All right? Okay, number seven, we have these lighthouses here uh, located on the coast of the ocean. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see the problem a little bit better. All right. The ship's traveling in safe waters as long as the angle from the ship S to the two lighthouses is angle RSB is less than or equal to some angle theta, which is the danger angle. Okay. As the ship gets closer to the shore, right, what happens to um to the angle it moves further and closer away well we can kind of get the idea if we consider these two to be like a circle right so what happens as the ship moves further away and gets out here what happens to this angle if this is our center of our circle compared to this one so as the ship gets closer we can see this angle starts to open up and get bigger and as the ship gets further away the angle gets smaller so um, the larger angle would be more dangerous because that means the ship is getting closer to the shore. All right. We want to stay further away from the shore here for a ship. Okay. We're going to bop over to page 32 now. And we're going to take a look at these three exercises real quick. Do a kind of a recap here. Okay. So find the measure of the angle X given the diagrams below. Notice that they may not be to scale. So if this angle here is 25 degrees, right, we always want to relate that back to the arc. So if this is 25, this intercepted arc, remember, is double, which is 50. And this central angle is the same, so this has to be 50. Okay? See if you can try the next one on your own. Pause it and do it. You can do it, guys. Okay? Go for it. Okay, so hopefully you realized that if this is 15 and these are equal, this has to be the same as this because there's base angles. So X is also 15 degrees. All right, and see if you can do the next one. Pause it. I'll wait. Hopefully you're trying. Okay, so uh, here we go. All right, so I've been kind of looking at this question. Um, I added a few things here to try to help myself out here. And um, I know the answer is 45. And I'm trying to get there. But I don't think we have enough information. So we have to make some assumptions here that are going to be interesting. So if we extend out line AC, okay, to make that a diameter, and then we can connect and form our angle here, we know that this angle is going to be 90 degrees. 90 degrees, right? Um, and this has to be 45. So this angle is also going to be 45 here, which would mean this is isosceles. Um, 
that's where we're getting kind of hung up here. So if you guys can come up with a oh, if you guys can come up with a solution here, because in order for this to be 45, that would have to be 90, which does not make sense because, and I can show you, here's the, uh, the book, right? Here's our angle, and they're saying x is 45. So this is true. That's got to be 90. But that's got to be 180, and it's not. So I don't think we can get this. I think they were trying to say what the measure of this angle was, which is 45. So, uh, yeah, we're going to X and A on that question A, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So remember, don't forget the Nearpod. All right, check it out, and uh, we'll go from there. Also, there's a change on Tuesdays. It was supposed to be a Delta Math. That is now a Nearpod as well. So just answer the questions in the Nearpod instead of doing the Delta Math assignment. I'll make sure I send out a reminder on that. All right. Have a good night, guys. Enjoy the weekend.